Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video and welcome back to the flight simulator. Today we're back here to talk about a very, very interesting plane that never came to be. Yeah, it's a concept and it's exactly the Tupolev 2444. I think you can call it triple four or something, I don't, I don't know. Now again, this is the Tupolev 2444, an interesting concept made by Tupolev and it was actually introduced in 2003, the concept. Yeah, Tupolev showed it at the MOX air show in 2003, uh, which is like the, one of the biggest Russian air shows in Moscow. Very interesting one. And well, they revealed this plane as a concept, a supersonic private jet that you can buy for yourself if you have the money to do so. <laughs> and you can fly around at Mach 2. And it sounds like a plane that can fly at that speed. Let's go ahead and take off. Now this plane's got two engines. It is very similar to the Concorde actually, even though that had four engines, but two engines is more, you know, efficient and we just took off. There we go. But you know, it shares that same Delta wing design, which, you know, allows this plane to fly at a higher speed. And it also features the same nose visor, of course. Here we go. We can just put it down like that. And as we all remember from the Concorde, this nose visor, also called Snoot Droot. Since pilots couldn't see out of the plane because of angled landing, engineers put together a solution. The Concorde featured a droop snoot. Droop snoot? Yeah, the, the snoot would droop. The snoot droop. It's of course needed for a landing here. Let's do one real quick. You know, these Delta wing design planes, they land unlike any other plane pretty much, you know, compared to airliners or something. Let's try to land here. We're coming in for a very, very messy landing. Come on. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Can we touch down? Have we touched down yet? There we go, that was a touchdown. Hmm, interesting. Alright, let's see if we can stop too with this interesting plane. Let's see if the stopping performance holds up to the other Russian planes that we know. Because we already know, you know, the Russian planes are pretty good when, when it comes to stopping. And there we go, we've actually stopped quite nicely here. Even though we <clears throat> touched down on, on the very end of the runway, pretty much. And, um, I don't like how the Snoop Droot looks when it's down. Compared to, like, the Concorde, for example. The Snoop would droop. Here, let's watch uh, this landing here again. How did that go? Oh. A little bad here, touching on the nose landing gear, whatever. We uh, did stop and <clears throat> not crash. That's good. But no, really, this is quite a genius idea from Tupolev, right? You know, the supersonic market is coming up, you know, especially we've got the Aeron plane, we've got the Boom over Shore plane, all those planes that I've already talked about that can fly supersonic. And they are actually not that much of a concept of the future anymore, especially the Boom plane, the over Shore. They're going to do a test flight like this year, right? So we all know that's actually coming. And so that's really... I think supersonic travel in general is coming back. So this is really a nice idea to also have a real private jet like this, really only for private travel, you know, for the people that can afford it and, you know, need to afford it. For example, you know, maybe Google would really buy this plane because their time is worth more than their money, maybe. I don't know. You know, from the corporate travel site. So there is definitely a market and an opportunity for this plane to be successful. Okay, so that's that's really nice. So maybe do some um, Swiss 001 channel testing. Hmm, where can we go? Let me test some short runway performance. Hmm, Catalina Island. Let's go there. So I kind of want to get used to flying this plane a little bit better. Now, if anyone remembers that one stream I did with this kind of plane trying to fly it, we all remember uh, that there are some interesting spelling mistakes, probably from the Russian translation of the cockpit. For example, it says here, hierolic system. That's nice. What else did we have? I think it was rudder down here with a th a three Ds. Great. And we're dying. Oh, wow. We should have focused on flying a little bit better. <clears throat> Never mind. Okay, let's come in now for this 900 meter long runway. Let's see if I can approve this plane as a short runway performance, sir. Okay. Wow. I'm having a little bit of a hard time trying to really control this plane properly. Let's hope that we can stop, which we can't. Rest in peace. Yeah, really, this plane kind of feels like it doesn't want to really touch down on the ground. Let's try this again. Interesting landing there, too. All right, second time, second try. Let's do this. Third try, let's do this. See, I wanted to use the whole runway there, and it kind of crashed before the runway. That wasn't good. Okay, let's try this again. Come on. Oh my god. Alright, let's just give up on this tail. What was this landing again? This plane kind of flies weirdly. Am I landing at too low of a speed or why is this plane... I had landing gear not out on this. God damn it. Alright, fourth try now. Try and land this weird Russian plane. Come on. Alright, come on. I think now I have a good feeling about this landing now. 
All right, at least a touchdown that doesn't result in a full crash. Let's go ahead and stop two. Let's do this. Fall on the speed brakes and fall on the brakes. Oh my goodness. See, I don't know. I'm trying to get the hang of controlling this plane, but especially low to the ground, it's very weird to control. As you can see, like, there's a lot of shakiness in flying this plane, and, you know, this is why this landing was super bad. And what I don't really like about this design either is how the nose pretty much touches the ground almost. I think we struck this nose on every landing so far, right? So that's actually quite a hazard. <laughs> Oh, damn. All right. Now, this plane is actually really nice. As you can see, there's a lot of opportunity in it. And there's a lot of people that would buy it. So... What happened to it? Why is it not a thing now? I mean, it's been 17 years since 2003. So what has happened to this plane? Let me just say nothing. Yeah, after Tupolev have announced this concept and talked about it, oh, this is the future. They never really made anything out of it following 2003. And well, what can I say? The internet presence of the Tupolev 2444 is quite weak. There's only, you know, there's only a German Wikipedia page, for example. There's no English one for this one. And well, it doesn't really say a lot about this plane other than some data and how it looks and everything. And well, that's really much it. I mean, it was even removed from the official Tupolev site in like 2012. Yep, they deleted this plane. I mean, actually, I found an archive here from 2011 from the Tupolev 2444 where they, you know, showed the pictures, showed the dimensions and talked great about this plane. Main features of the design. And of course, I mentioned the cruising speed of Mach 2, which is almost Almost as fast as the Concorde could fly, by the way. And here they actually showed an interesting graph. A round trip in one day from Moscow to New York. You know, a flight. Apparently, a Moscow to New York flight would take around four hours, which is amazing. I mean, Moscow, New York, that's quite a bit. Uh, but that's really it. Now, they have removed this whole site again in 2012 or something. And, you know, that's really all there is to the plane, really. That's it. I cannot find any reason why they did not develop this plane properly and only let it live as a concept but uh, of course there is probably a reason maybe they just didn't want to uh, i don't know i mean tupolev F has done <laughs> a few supersonic planes already they know how to do it and you know they worked out pretty w kind of well so i don't really get why they you know didn't actually put some further development into this plane really but what we can say though is you know that aircraft manufacturers of course especially russian aircraft manufacturers they like to experiment around with designs and concepts there's been thousands i mean take a look at the sukhoi kr860 a double deck airliner kind of looks like the a380 off wish which could seat a thousand people which is quite crazy so that's probably what happened but hey you know maybe there's a chance for this concept to somewhere come back i mean actually i read this on aero telegraph by the way as of 2020 they started working on a new supersonic jet so we may or may not know maybe two Tupolev is coming up with another design or maybe reusing this design and we can see it in this year's air show of Mox, right? In Moscow. Maybe we can look forward to something. So, uh, yeah, guys, that is the Tupolev 2444. It uh, does need a little bit of a runway, doesn't it? I mean, it's uh, quite, quite a... Oh, never mind. We took off. Uh, yeah, really nice plane, but, you know, again, very dead. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. On YouTube, like Block, Mubarak, Junk in the Trunk, Rafal, Old Man the Human, DJ Straw, Deload, Tyler Park, In from Osk, Gurkham, uh, Stefan Smithofer, Moritz Wilhausen, Tuppy Cook, uh, Great Crime but John, No to You, Laird Islama, Government Pasta, Calamity Airlines, Kelly Chaos, Philip Terrier, uh, uh, Science, uh, Mass Collegue, Rodolfo, New York, Oli H, Bliviation, Cheese Doritos, Shadow.